The chain rule, level one. We're going to start by working on an example. Find a derivative of r of x equals the quantity x plus two squared. You should know how to find a derivative of this function. First, we need to expand the binomial. Then we use the sum rule along with the product rule to find a derivative. So it looks like this. Expanding the binomial gives us the following. And taking appropriate derivatives gives the following. Uh, the derivative of r of x is equal to 2x plus 4. Okay, that was easy enough. Now here's a twist. What if the binomial was actually raised to the power of 100? Then what? Sure, you can expand it by systematically folding 100 times the same binomial. Or you can save precious time by using the chain rule. Before we learn the chain rule, we need to review composite functions. Composition of functions. From your studies of algebra, you were introduced to functions by using the variables x and y, like this function. Then you were introduced to function notation, and this same function can be written as f of x equals 3x plus 4. Then you learn how to evaluate functions at specific values, say at x equals 3. We show this by using function notation as follows. f of 3 equals 3 times 3 plus 4, where f of 3 is equal to 13. Lastly, you learn that not only can you evaluate numbers, but you can also evaluate other functions. Say you have a second function, call it g of x, and say that it was equal to x squared plus 2. You can actually evaluate f of x using g of x, and it would look like this. f of g of x is equal to 3 times the quantity x squared plus 2 plus 4. So it turns out that f of g of x is equal to 3x squared plus 10. The expression 3x squared plus 10 is a composite function because it is composed of two given functions, f of x and g of x. This process is called composition. So in general, given two functions f and g, the composition function, also called the composition of f and g, is mathematically expressed as follows. If you are really rusty with this concept, I advise you to check the algebra 2 video on composition of functions before continuing this video. We are actually going to do the opposite and break a composite function into its individual functions. The first skill you need to develop to learn the chain rule is recognizing functions as being a composite of functions, specifically f and g. Let's practice that. Find the composite f of x and g of x of the following functions. Say we have the function r of x equals the quality x plus 2 squared. So in general, our f of x is going to be the outer function and our g of x is going to be the inner function. So in this case, the outer function is actually x squared, and the inner function is the quantity x plus 2. As a way to check your answer, let's actually calculate the composition of f and g of x. So doing the composition of f and g of x gives us the following. So the composition tells us to evaluate f of x using g of x. So it turns out that the composition of the f and g of x is actually the quantity x plus 2 squared. Okay, so how about the function r of x equals the square root of the quantity 4 plus 3x? The outer function is the square root of x, and the inner function is the quantity 4 plus 3x. How about r of x equals sine of 4x? The outer function here is actually sine of x, and the inner function is 4x. Alright, how about the following? r of x equals tangent of sine of x. Once again, the outer function here is actually tangent of x, and the inner function is sine of x. Let's try this one. r of x equals e to the power of the square root of x. Now here, the outer function is actually e to the x, and the inner function is the square root of x. All right, let's try this one. r of x equals 1 over the quantity x to the power of 4 plus 1 raised to the power of 3. So first, we need to rewrite this expression using a negative power. So this expression can be rewritten as the quantity x to the power of 4 plus 1 raised to the power of negative 3. So this function is actually a composition function. The outer function is x to the power of negative 3, and the inner function is x to the power of 4 plus 1. Let's try this function. r of x equals sine squared of x. Now sine squared of x is the same thing as the quantity sine of x squared. It's the same thing. It's just written in a different form. So if that's the case, then the outer function is actually x squared, and the inner function is sine of x. How about this one? r of x equals 3 to the power of sine of x. The outer function here is 3 to the power of x, and the inner function is sine of x. Let's try the last one here. r of x equals cosine of the quantity a cubed plus x cubed, where a is a constant. The outer function is cosine of x, and the inner function is a to the power of 3 
plus x to the power of 3. All right, it's time to introduce the chain rule. The chain rule says that the derivative of a composite function is the derivative of the outer function evaluated at the inner function multiplied by the derivative of the inner function and as always, f and g have to be differentiable functions to use this rule and any of the other rules we have learned. We can also use Leibniz notation to generalize the chain rule. So in general, if y equals f as a function of u and u equals g as a function of x, then the chain rule can be rewritten using Leibniz notation as follows. dy over dx equals dy over du times du over dx. So it turns out that the derivative of composite functions is a product of the derivatives of f and g. This seems reasonable if we interpret the derivative as a rate of change. For example, if u changes twice as fast as x, and y changes three times as fast as u, then y changes six times as fast as x. You can remember the chain rule in Leibniz notation by pretending that dy over du and du over dx are quotients. If that was the case, then the du would cancel and you would end up with dy over dx. But remember, I repeat, they are not quotients. Just pretend that they are for memorizing purpose only. They are not actual quotients. So in our next video, we are actually going to do a couple of examples that requires the use of the chain rule.